All right. Uh, my last video, I looked at the uh, microphone preamp, uh, which is this little section here. Um, and right next door is this little section here, which is interesting. Um, it's not in series. It's actually uh, kind of on the back end of things. Uh, but this is the squelch circuit. So we'll take a look at the squelch circuit and uh, see how they've implemented it. Okay, so what is the squelch circuit? Well, the squelch circuit is if you have some signal and uh, there's noise, there's noise on this on uh, that's just kind of there all the time. And then when somebody comes along and talks, uh, so this is like audio, okay? Audio. And so there's noise and then somebody talks. When there's noise, you just kind of don't want to listen to it and you want to just shut it off. Um, and then you turn it on when you when you hear somebody. So you see these sometimes used in um, uh, musicians. Uh, so they call it a noise gate. So if you play guitar and you have a lot of uh, a lot of distortion, which means you have a lot of noise, you don't want that there all the time. So when you're not playing, you want to mute it. And so uh, there's there's something called a noise gate, and uh, that'll do that'll do the same thing as a squelch circuit. So some people call it squelch. Some people call it noise gate. I there's probably some other names too. Um, I actually implemented one of these before on an audio preamp that I did, a microphone preamp, and I actually added a, uh, a noise gate to my, to my, uh, to my uh, audio chain. And I monitored the, the uh, magnitude of the signal, and then I uh, uh, turned off the uh, audio if, if, if I wasn't hearing enough. And that's basically what we're going to look at here. Well, how do you know that you have uh, you have enough? Uh, so this is the sculpt circuit. I've redrawn it in simplified form. Um, let's take a look at this piece by piece. Um, the first thing we're going to look at is let's see. I need some things to block out things with. All right. So I've got some uh, things to block out the things that we're not interested in. So if you want to detect whether a signal has a particular uh, amplitude or not, you can um, uh, detect the peaks and then do some type of measurement on those peaks. And the way that you detect peaks is to run it through, run it through a rectifier. And I think I've showed this before. We just, we just have a, a diode and, and a capacitor. And uh, that's, our peak, that's our peak detector. That's our rectification. And this one has an extra filter on it. It has a little, uh, another RC after it. But, but, that's, but that's the output of this thing. Now, uh, I showed this once before. You can have a precision uh, diode. You can, you can have an, a, uh, an op amp and you can have the feedback to get rid of the voltage drop of the uh, diode and stuff. Well, this is a bit older and, and uh, we're, we're only working with single transistors. So they don't want to have a lot of drop across this uh, diode because it's going to ruin things. And so they use a 1N60, which is a germanium diode. Germanium. Sorry, sorry about the uh, the guy mowing the lawn outside. Um, so we have a germanium diode here, and so we only have about maybe 0.3 volts drop uh, across here. Um, now, because you've thrown away a little bit of voltage here. Um, it's going to be quite far down and you want to kind of like boost it up a bit. And so instead of referencing this capacitor to ground, we, if we referenced it to a higher voltage, then this will all be pushed up. So how do we generate a higher voltage instead of referencing this to ground? Well, the way that they did that was they brought in a higher voltage and they used a um, silicon diode this time, a 1N914, um, and so we have at least 0.7 volts here, and they've smoothed it out with a little RC filter. And so we've kind of pushed this thing all the way up. Now, I think I've showed things like this before. Um, if you want to boost the signal up even more, you can uh, consider using a di a, uh, an LED here. An LED has a higher forward voltage, or use two diodes um, in order to push it up a little bit farther. Um, and then if you want to go crazy, you can use a Zener diode here. And a Zener diode will allow you to push this up even farther. So uh, that's what they've done here. And uh, so this, uh, this diode uh, references to that ground level. And then we do uh, peak detection across that. So anyway, it gets this voltage up higher. So that's, that's what they've done here. All right. So then that just gets driven by this little amplifier here. 
and then that gets driven by this amplifier here. So they basically have a two-stage amplifier, one stage, two stage, and then they have a peak detector with a little circuit here to push it up. So that's the way they do their squelch circuit. Now that's just detecting how much signal you have. Now you have to make a decision on whether you want to um, stop the audio or not stop the audio. So how do they do that? Um, well, we're going to send this to a different circuit. And the different circuit is down here. And basically, um, if you have enough voltage to turn on this transistor, then it will squelch. It will, it will noise gate. Um, and it, it is used in a very simplistic manner. Um, here's audio in and audio out. So the audio is coming in, and then it'll finally go through an amplifier into a speaker. And right here, if you pull it to ground, you're going to kill it, okay? And if you pull it to ground just a tiny little bit, you won't kill very much. But if you pull it all the way to ground, you'll kill it entirely. So that's the way this squelch circuit is working. In modern times, you would probably use an, uh, an N-channel FET here uh, to have a very low um, uh, voltage across here. Um, but but uh, they're using an NPN. It works just great. Um, so that's the way they've accomplished the, uh, accomplished the squelch circuit. Uh, pretty interesting.